So I think there are competing trends. Um, there are trends at the grassroots level, if you like, the, the local levels, the non-governmental, intellectual levels, um, people who are working in the field in humanitarian situations, where we see a large desire to comply, to implement international law. Um, and that's true, I think, as well, even for non-state armed groups, which are looking, some of them are looking to see how they can behave more morally, more ethically, as, if you like, governments in waiting. But now, now we see at the, the state level, at the UN, um, in a number of international forums, governments behaving as if international law didn't matter. They're withdrawing from treaties. They're not looking to create new ones. They're starting to build up new nuclear weapons. They don't seem to care too much if chemical weapons have been used, or at least some of the governments don't. They're not leading by example in that regard. And it's very hard to know whether which of these competing trends will win out. I think at the government level, they tend not to work in silos. I think they work on an integrated level in that you know a, a, a diplomat or a, a diplomatic mission at the UN, be that in New York and Geneva, will work across the fields. Will work in health, they'll work in uh, disarmament, they'll work on biological weapons, nuclear weapons, space, they work on small arms, landmines, and so on, human rights. So they integrate at that point. Governments also need to integrate their policies across those fields, and some governments do that better than others. Where I think the problems really lie are in the non-governmental, particularly academic um, organizations, which, if you like, are the sort of intellectual hothouse of of these types of ideas that get fomented and, and created and then put into the policy system. And there I find that perhaps because of expertise, it often is very siloed. So you'll have experts on nuclear weapons not knowing anything about small arms. You'll have um, experts on space knowing nothing about biological weapons, etc. And so they don't understand what's going on in those fields and they don't get the creative spark from learning about what's going on in the governance of other weapons systems. Bringing in as well scientists and engineers, mathematicians, computer scientists and so on, uh, psychologists, artists, where we have a completely different viewpoint and knowledge is also particularly useful for breaking down those silos. So as we start to see um, more meetings that include a wider diversity of expertise, a wider diversity of experience, regional diversity, gender diversity, and so on. I think we start to get more creativity, and that's what I think we need to break down the silos. I think this is perhaps the hardest thing, because our potential next steps have to take into account the very difficult international security situation that we're finding ourselves in. Uh, we have a number of countries that are uh, literally breaking the law in what they do. We have new technologies which are enabling them to do that and, and are providing situations, I think, for them to move into as well, to, to behave in a way that is not yet governed um, in, in, a, uh, in that sense. I think uh, we have uh, countries that we always thought we could rely on at least to uh, promote the value of international law and the rules-based system and uh, what's happening is we can no longer rely on them to do that. So whatever we do now, it has to take that into account as a reality and it has to find a way, I think, to, to m pull people back from, from that. Um, one of the problems is that a lot of people don't seem to care very much about international law. They do care, I think, though, about their environment. They do care about the air that they breathe. They do care about issues like climate change, uh, pollution, plastic pollution in our waters, and so on. Um, and nuclear weapons, uh, conventional weapons, war, conflict, all feed into, of course, that. Uh, so I think what we need to do, probably, is for us to understand the connections uh, between the subjects that we are uh, really struggling with at the moment, such as weapons governance, um, and the issues where perhaps people have got more understanding of how it's impacting on them right now and their children and work across those silos and across those 
boundaries so that we can uh, connect with people better and they understand the implications of what's going on right now uh, in, in a way that really will have a direct impact on them.